Hey guys, Weapons from the Future here. I just wanted to put in something extra before the actual video starts. Just in case there was any doubt about it, this video contains no spoilers for any of the games that I'm about to mention. At least not narratively speaking. There might be some things like within the menus or certain abilities that I might have unlocked that you don't naturally unlock at that point in the game because I'm going back and playing them just for footage. But yeah, no story spoilers. So so if you don't know anything about Trails or you don't know anything about any other games I mentioned um, in this, uh, I don't know what to call it. I think calling it a rant video might be a little too strong of a word, but I mean, it is kind of me just getting something off of my chest, although I do try and be at least a little bit polite about it. Um, whatever, it's spoiler free. Enjoy the video. Trails community, you are killing me. Do not have me make up a new subcategory of video this soon. Uh, probably not. I guess if this becomes a habit, I'll make it a new series, but if not, it'll just go under miscellaneous in terms of playlists. The infamous Ark Wars. Where in this series should you start? Uh, pretty simple. You start with Reverie, and everything before that is a prequel, so you just play backwards and continually gain more knowledge about the initial game through these massive prequel games, you know, and that's the best way to play the game. Y you're supposed to get, uh, spoiled on everything, uh... That's part of the process. Okay, I'm done joking, for the most part. So, in a series where every game matters, can you start with the fourth game? Can you start with the sixth game? Can you start with the eleventh game that is the third newest game in the entire series? Well, to those of y'all who are strapped for time, I'm gonna sort of save you guys the headache. Yes, you can. You can also eat an entire cheesecake in one sitting for breakfast, but that doesn't mean you should. Trails, or at the very least the western portion of the fanbase, I'm not sure how the Japanese are faring right now, but the western side of the Trails fanbase has found themselves in yet another arc war. Basically everyone arguing over what's the best starting point because there is a new game coming out and... You know what, let's just be intellectually honest about this conversation. There are a lot of people that do want to jump into Daybreak because it's the newest one, it's the shiniest one, it's the one that's being advertised, they might like the way the characters look in that one more, etc. Let's not pretend like that isn't a factor in, you know, making these decisions. This seems to happen every time a new game comes out or a old game gets localized, so it's kind of new for the Western, uh, fans, but not really for Japanese fans. And with the games that are quite clearly, uh, you know, sequel Trails games, like Sky SC, Azure, every Cold Steel game past one. Although apparently that did not stop Nisa from recommending Cold Steel 3 as a solid entry point, which sounds insane to me. If you see a series and it's Cold Steel 1 through 4, obviously you're gonna miss some shit if you start at the one that's got the big, bold, fiery looking 3 right next to the title. But my point is, when it's a game that is quite clearly a follow-up Trails game, the discussion for whether or not you can start with that is usually pretty quick and simple. Even if you do not want to start all the way from Sky FC, it is quite clear that you would at the very least still need to start at the beginning of whatever arc it is to get the general core idea of what's going on in the sequel. And even then, that is putting it very lightly, but you get what I mean. Sequel Trails games, the discussion is usually quick and there's not much room for debate anyway. Also, full disclaimer before I go any further, I have not played Daybreak. Actually, I haven't played... I'm on Cold Steel 2, so I still need to play 3, 4, Reverie, and then Daybreak 1 and 2, and then I guess uh, uh, Kai no Kisaki when it comes out. Uh, that'll probably be localized by the time I get to it, but even if not, you know, I'll probably play it through a fan translation if it hasn't uh, come out yet. But I say that to say my direct experience with Trails is from FC up to Cold Steel 2. I just wanted to make that clear. Anything I say about Daybreak is coming from the viewpoint of someone who has only seen screenshots of it on Twitter and have heard, like, other friends and acquaintances talking about it. And for the most part, a lot of what I kind of wanted to say about the situation I've already said on Twitter in some way, shape, or form, but it's been, like, almost a week and a half and this is still going on. So, like, I was kind of like, you know what? This is getting a video because this is getting ridiculous at this point, you know what I mean? And I am not solely talking to the quote-unquote toxic gatekeepers who are sort of purists and are just saying, no, start from Sky no matter what. Some of y'all who are out here running defense for playing the series out of order, I'm gonna kind of roast y'all too, so... 
get ready for that. So like a week and some change ago, I kind of weighed in with my own opinion on this whole thing because my timeline was just flooded with people arguing about you should start with Sky or no, it's okay to start with Zero or Cold Steel, whatever other game they were running defense for. Um, you're being a toxic gatekeeper if you say otherwise, yada yada. If you've been anywhere near that discourse, you know the drill. So I weighed in with my opinion. It kind of encapsulates still kind of how I feel about this whole thing. Objectively speaking, if we are being 110% literal here, yes, you can start from a later entry. I know I joked about it before, but yes, you could start from Reverie. Is that a good idea? Like, no, but like nobody can physically stop you from pressing play on the Steam store or, you know, picking up the game, putting the disc in, picking up the controller and start playing at any game. And I try my best not to go out of my way to like, you know, police people either. Like I might strongly suggest, you know, a certain order or whatever, but I'm not gonna like get behind you like a pit bull or something and like say, oh no, 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 no. You, you go back and like play play it this way or whatever like okay like if i run into somebody right and they did tell me that they started with cold steel one or they started with zero or they started with some game other than fc it's not like i'm gonna stop the conversation of whatever we were talking about and proceed to bite their head off and say like they're not a true fan because they started elsewhere like no like at that point they made their decision and as long as they you know understand what's going on or they at least recognize that they missed some stuff and maybe they're gonna go back and sort of look it over again or whatever like I'm not gonna make a big deal out of it. But obviously, if somebody comes and asks, okay, do all of these games matter? Can I start from Daybreak? What is the best uh, order to play the games in? The first thing that's gonna come out of my mouth is I'm always gonna say, start with Sky FC, work your way down. If they absolutely refuse to, then I usually recommend Cold Steel 1, but I'm never going to say with my whole chest that Cold Steel 1 is a better starting point than Sky FC. As a matter of fact, I did say that in my Cold Steel review that a lot of people do kind of downplay how much Cold Steel 1 does reference older games. Does it do it as much as SC references FC or Azure references Zero? No, but it still does it, you know, to act like nothing is not gonna go over your head when you start with Cold Steel 1, that's just not true at all. And don't even get me started on Zero, okay? I know that from Nisa's point of view, like as a business, they're obviously going to recommend Zero as a good entry point because it's the game they were currently trying to sell. So if you tell people they have to play the Sky Trilogy to understand a lot of what goes on in Zero, you know, that's gonna be a turnoff for some people. So like from a business perspective, I understand why they wouldn't do that, just like what they were saying with Cold Steel 3. But from the perspective of a fan who, you know, might have already played the game, like Zero is a horrible starting point. Again, I don't know about Daybreak, but between Sky FC, Zero and Cold Steel 1, I will tell you right now, Zero is absolutely the worst sort of starter game you could start with. Without spoiling anything, if you're watching this video and you haven't played the Trail series and you just came across this, Zero not only introduces the new set of characters for that arc, but it concludes the character arcs for the two main characters from Sky, as well as one very major character from Sky as well. So it's like that's three really big characters that like you're gonna completely miss out on the conclusion to their story, and that was a big part of the Sky trilogy. I'm having a hard time putting this into words, but you are going to miss a whole lot more starting from Zero than you are going to be if you start from Cold Steel 1 or especially Sky FC. Plus, if graphical fidelity is what's turning you off from uh, starting with an older game, I don't know why you would start with Zero because Zero does not look much different from Sky FC anyway. The only valid reason that I could argue that you would want to start from Zero is if you do not own a PC, you do not want to play on PC, and like, you just have, you just can't do PC gaming at all, even though Sky can run on a potato, but I know people, you know, have their issues, so I'm not gonna, like, pretend like I know their situations, but, like, you absolutely have no access to Sky, and you want to start from as early as possible on whatever console you have. In that case, Zero would be the earliest game to start with. And I'm also gonna say this right now. If you primarily play on PC, and you're, you have a computer, you know, powerful enough to run most games, there is absolutely no reason why you cannot start from Sky and just work your way up. Although, like I said before, just because you objectively can start from Sky doesn't necessarily mean you may want to. And in that case, like, like I said, like, I'm not your dad. 
If you opt to start with zero or you opt to start with Cold Steel 1, like, it is what it is. And I said this second part on Twitter too, we're gonna get into the second part now. Here is my only stipulation, and if I've sounded really harsh or maybe even a bit sort of sounding like a jerk throughout this whole video, this is why. This is my biggest fear when it comes to playing the games out of order. I'm not saying it's gonna happen to everyone, but it's just something that sort of lingers in my head. You need to understand the fact that there are going to be things that you're going to miss. There are going to be references to other games that you miss. And that is my only sort of hang up. As long as you understand that and you do not hold it against the game if um, the story is a bit worse to you because there were parts of it you couldn't understand and it doesn't taint your opinion of the game because of it or you don't dock points because of it, then it's fine. I won't press the issue with you specifically any further. And I say that because I have been through this same song and dance with another JRPG series in which all of the games matter and you need to play them in a certain order to understand what is going on. I am, of course, talking about Kingdom Hearts. I remember when Kingdom Hearts 3 was coming out. Everyone was excited, bouncing off the walls. They had their wish list of what they wanted to see in the games and stuff. Some people were, you know, very impressed with what they got with the game. Some people were very disappointed. There were numerous reasons why people liked or didn't like Kingdom Hearts 3, but I am going to be zeroing in on one specific reason why there were some people who docked points from the game. Some, not all, it wasn't overtly common, but it was common enough that it kind of raised an eyebrow. And that was sort of the game being promoted as something you could play on its own and still enjoy without having played the older games. And even if you don't play Kingdom Hearts, you probably still know it as like that anime Disney game where it does tell this really, really big story across all these games, and you are going to be pretty confused if you either play them out of order or you skip games or you miss some or whatever. All the games do matter. And once again, from a business perspective, if you're looking at it through the lens of Disney or Square Enix, yeah, from a business standpoint, of course they would try and sort of play it off like the game can stand on its own. It's the newest game that they're trying to sell. It's the shiniest one in terms of graphical fidelity. It has all the quality of life gameplay improvements. From a business standpoint, that makes sense. And then from the standpoint of maybe someone who's interested in the series, of course, the visuals might still attract them. They might also see uh, Disney worlds that they like uh, in the game. Kingdom Hearts 3 used a lot of newer, more modern Disney movies, at least for its time in it. It also added in Pixar movies for the first time. So that could definitely draw newcomers uh, towards the series and kind of in incentivize them to not want to go back and play the older games. It was also the first multi-platform Kingdom Hearts game, it was going to be on PS4 and Xbox One, and at the time, the HD remixes, which were the remasters of all the older games, those were not available on Xbox yet, those came out after the fact. So if you were an Xbox fan and you were interested in Kingdom Hearts, all like 10 of you, I think the overwhelming majority of the people were going in on PlayStation, but whatever. I'm not here to talk about console wars. If you were going into the series and you were someone who played primarily on Xbox, you couldn't go back and play the older games even if you wanted to, at least not without buying an entirely new console. That's something you wouldn't have been able to do until very recently. Well, not really recently. It's been a few years now. I keep forgetting the pandemic happened too, so that shaved off like a few years off of everyone's lives. It kind of feels like the time skip between seasons where like maybe the main character goes into like a coma or something and then they wake up and like everything is different and all the characters are wearing different clothes now and shit like that's what it feels like ah I i'm getting off topic again but my point is i'm still talking about kingdom hearts here the parallels between what happening now with Daybreak and what was happening with Kingdom Hearts three years ago, they feel very familiar. Shiny new game is coming out and it looks really good and some people want to jump in on the newest one because it's the best looking or they like the characters more or something about them is attracting them to that one specifically but not necessarily the older ones. Considering this is about skipping games, this was a shockingly common sentiment that was going around as Kingdom Hearts 3 was coming out. Some longtime Kingdom Hearts fans, or at least fans that had already played the older games, were kind of like, listen, you're not going to understand 3 unless you play these older ones first. There's going to be a lot of stuff that kind of goes over your head. Um, and sometimes 
you know, they'd be like, what do you mean I gotta play the older games before I play 3? Like, I'm sure it'll be fine. Like, I'm only in it for the Disney anyway. You guys are being elitists and gatekeepers for, um, telling me to do this before I hop into 3. And once again, technically speaking, you could just pick up 3 and play it without playing the other games. Physically speaking, no one can stop you. But yeah, I don't think it's necessarily gatekeeping or being toxic or being, like, a rude person to at least recommend that they start from the top and work their way down so that they have the most appreciation for that latest entry once they actually get to it. Now, because I know I've been kind of beaten down on the every order is fine, you know, side of the fan base for quite a while now. Okay, let me turn it over to the sort of the purest side of the fandom, which I tend to lean more towards mostly because coming from Kingdom Hearts, I sort of understand the importance of playing the games in a certain order to get the best experience. I've once again been through that before. I never claimed that this video was unbiased, just putting that out there. But I do think there are some people, some, not all, that do take it a bit far. If you're out here and you're calling someone a fake Trails fan just because they did start the series out of order, but they're quite clearly caught up now, as I had said before, and they seem to have an idea of what's going on, like, I do think that is, that is going a bit far. Like, at that point, they did what they did, just, just drop it. I don't think at that point it's relevant. Like I had said earlier, as long as they understand that they were going to miss some things if they do that, and they're not holding it against the games themselves, then it's fine. Which was what happened, at least from time to time with Kingdom Hearts 3. They started with 3, playing the game out of order, and then when they couldn't understand shit, they blamed the game for it. Like I said, there were other reasons why people didn't like Kingdom Hearts 3, but out of all of the criticisms, I think that one was probably the stupidest one because it could have easily been solved by people playing the games in order, or at the very least, recognizing that 3 was the conclusion to an entire saga, so there were gonna be things that went over their heads. And like I said, I guess that's just what I'm afraid with when it comes to trails. They play out of order, let's say they do start with Daybreak for example. Uh, they reference something in Daybreak that's from an older game, and maybe it's important, or whatever, and it goes over their head, and they get confused, and then instead of saying, well, you know what, I played it out of order, so I'm sure it'll be explained in this older game, they hold it against the game. If they're a gaming YouTuber or reviewer, they may reflect this in the review. If they frequent Twitter or Instagram or whatever social media they tend to use, they may uh, voice their opinion um, through there as well, and now they're basically <laughs> projecting a warped sort of perception of the game, and like what if that turns new people off? to starting the series. I feel like a lot of people that are not really on board with going too far out of order when it comes to playing the Trail series, it's not necessarily they're just trying to be mean for the sake of being mean. Maybe some do, but like, I feel like most of them just want everyone else to experience the series the way they did it. And the thing is, if you play in release order, at least so far, because like I said, I'm only up to Cold Steel 2, but it really is just utterly amazing how they managed to take so many plot points and just build off of them gradually. Some things don't even get followed up on until several games later, but it's like Falcom does this shit so good. Like, can you blame someone for wanting another fan to experience that same magic? Like, oh, I, I sound like I'm running an ad for fucking Disney World at this point, but you get what I mean. I don't think it necessarily comes from being mean. I think it just comes from passion, albeit misguided sometimes. I guess the final thing I want to touch on is this obviously just applies to games that tell one continuous story with many details that rely on previous entries for the current ones to make sense. There are long running series like Final Fantasy, Monster Hunter, uh, the East series, barring a uh, 1, 2, and Origin, which kind of work together, but there are series that have, like, many entries, but the entries do, like, stand alone, and they might be loosely connected to each other, but not to the point where it's, like, absolutely crucial that you have to play the older stuff to get into the new ones. I'm not talking about series like those. Final Fantasy, for example, you know, with the exception of the sequels that, you know, like, tend to for the after years, or, you know, the games that are quite obviously marked as being a sequel, yeah, you can play those in whatever order you want because they're all either not connected or they're very loosely connected. They're more thematically connected as opposed to narratively connected. But series where, you know, they don't go this route and they do tell a very, um, 
long and continuous story over multiple games like how many games do you actually see that you know do that and you know really commit to it because i can only think of what trails kingdom hearts i heard metal gear is like that but i've never played it you can crucify me uh in the comments when you're done watching this video and leaving a like <laughs> I'm sure there's others, but there aren't many of them. You get what I mean? So, like, I do think it's truly something special when a when a developer tries to commit to something like this, and I do think that it's not inherently evil for fans to want to respect that. And that's about everything I have to say regarding this situation. I didn't, again, even intend to make a video on this, but this has been going on for so long, and people have been talking about it with such fervor that, like, I'm kind of making this video out of, like, shock that that, like this is still going on and it's not the first time it's happened either if i hurt your feelings or got under your skin a bit i apologize it will happen again but for now that will mark the end of this video so as i said do leave a like if you enjoyed it or dislike as well if you feel like i might have been wrong about something or you have a counterpoint you know i won't mind hearing it uh sub to the channel if you haven't already special thanks to all channel members for your continued support it is much appreciated and i will see you guys again very soon